All right, so this is uh, this video here is about episode 21. So somebody gets a new D41 Frontier and uh, I install electronic dizzy. I also uh, make some carb linkage. I strip the doors of the glass. That's what you're seeing here. I got all the glass out of the do doors finally. And uh, I bleed the brakes with the, the one man tool. I also get all the painting done on the inside. All the black painting is done on the floors. And also all the rust removal. Uh, or did I do the rust in the last one? Anyways, you don't want your treat. So this is episode 21. Enjoy. Uh, I just got my uh, clone distributor for an L whatever, L16, but it's kind of interesting. I have to use the old uh, adapter. I just cleaned it up. And it does fit, but there's an issue. So that fits nicely in there, but this cap is kind of confusing. Because this cap is bigger than the two old ones. The rotor is bigger. So these old caps, I don't know if these are all 16s or who knows. They don't fit. Actually, they do fit if they got a tab on here. If you cut the tab off or remove this rubber seal, you can use these old caps. But the weird thing is... The new cap and the old cap, you can see the distance. So the rotor will not fit in my old caps. So I'm assuming the distributor is for an L18, maybe an L20 that's more popular. And these are L16 caps. I'm assuming I have to try to figure that out because if I ever need to replace the cap and rotor, I can't use an L16, obviously. Assuming, of course, my old distributor was an L16. A lot of assumptions, so I'll have to figure that out. Yeah, it looks good. I think that's point number one. Here's some interesting things with these distributors. Okay, here's the original 70 L16 dual point distributor. Okay, cap rotor. There's the old technology. I just bought one of these replacement L16 electronic distributors, cloned, which I assumed it clones an L20 distributor because, um, you know, that's when it came out. But the interesting thing is the caps are different. You cannot run, you can't mix the caps. The cap on the uh, this distributor is actually bigger than the old one. The spacing between the terminals is bigger. Now the rotors are different. Now I can run an L16 cap and rotor on this distributor and, and vice versa, but they are physically different at the tops. Now this old distributor also came with a truck. Don't know what it's from. I assume this was an L20 distributor, but the old this cap doesn't fit. You know the base is the same, but it doesn't fit on here. So it's a bigger diameter. I threw away the old cap that was on here because it was broken. But I was able to use the pedestal, and I have to use both pieces: the steel piece and the aluminum piece. Like you can see here, I could have used this one. And I went ahead and used this one because I don't know what this distributor is. But the aluminum piece and the steel piece fit onto this distributor and fit into the truck. So that's cool. So it all bolts up. I'm still kind of confused on why. All these different sizes. Now you can see that you can't use the metal plate that comes with it unless I had an L20 engine maybe. Because the inside damper is the same, but the bolt patterns don't bolt up. So you have to keep the aluminum pedestal with the steel, it appears. You can't mix and match. All three of these are different. I got three different distributors and three different styles. Uh, I only have one. I only have two aluminums though, but I have three steels. And distributors, I have two sizes. I have the small one and the large one. But there's two sizes of caps on the top and two sizes on the size on the bottom, it appears. Very confusing. I thought this stuff was all the same, but I just grew up with an L18, and so I guess I had this bigger cap on my old truck. Never had this smaller cap. So going forward, I'll probably just buy tune-up parts for like a 74 through 79, 
L18, L20. I just use those caps and rotors. I just have to remember I cannot use, well, I could use an L16 cap and rotor. They just got to be kept in pairs. Does that make any sense? Oh, and here's the part number that they clone. This is the part number on the box of this distributor. So it's a 3S400, 22100 just means distributor, and that's for the vehicle. So it comes for a vehicle 3S400. Now this distributor is labeled B9805, so I need to look up what that vehicle is. Uh, so the, I was assuming these two part numbers were going to be the same or, you know, interchangeable. So I was assuming this was an L20 distributor. But then again, it is a bigger diameter. This cap doesn't fit. An L18 and L20 cap are the same diameter on the bottom. So I just don't know what the hell this distributor is for. Them. But oh well, don't need it anymore. Just steal some parts off of it. All right, here's my plan for a throttle bracket. Got a piece of uh, thick steel here. I'm gonna bolt that on those two bolts. That I don't know what they're for. I don't need them. And I'm gonna bolt it on there. And then I'm gonna put one hole here for the cable to go straight up. So I just took off this uh, R50 throttle. What was it from a throttle body I found? Junkyard. So I just laid that on there. I'm going to remove that line, and then when it's wide open, got to remove that. So basically, got to remove all that extra steel. I've already cut this once before. Trim this off a little bit. It's just a big weight on the bottom to make it heavy. I guess for counterbalance or whatever. I don't think I even need that on it since it's not a throttle body anymore. So we'll uh, remove that steel. Fill some holes in this. See how this works. All right, here's my first attempt. I was hitting the intake manifold, so I had to bend it up. But uh, I made another bracket, and it's still, uh, I can do full throttle. I can only get one barrel open, and then it's like it stops. I don't know what the deal is. Put some lights on. I do full throttle. Oh, it hasn't even opened up the second barrel yet. That was a failure. I might take out version two. So here's, now that I got it all on there, it doesn't have the right ratio. Problem is, this needs to go 90, 90 degrees is full throttle. That is full throttle. It's 90 degrees. That's all it goes. I was looking at this universal one. It's got a whole lines up kind of with that one. This is more where I want it to be. There isn't enough. There's too much throw on the cable. It's too short of a throw for this whole... It really needs to be higher and farther forward. Well, I put on this one, and this one's higher and farther forward. I even want it more. So I'm thinking about doing is uh, actually flatten this and just weld this on here. I could cut all that off. That's what I need to do. Something like that. I was gonna cut this in half, and then put a plate on the back, and then move that hole up and over. And notice itself, my first, my second hole in this, this hole in the second bracket was in the perfect place. It's got to be lined up with this little nipple here. It's got to be farther over. But uh, now that I've made this thing longer, I've got the full throw. I think I'm hitting down there almost. So what I need to do is, and also the cable is too long right now, but there's not enough. So this needs to come down just a little bit, and this needs to come out. Because a uh, full throttle doesn't do full throttle. It's full throttle right there, just about. I think it's at the cable. I, think I just need to remake this bracket exactly like how I had it the second time. I should never cut off that extra hole. What was I thinking? Oh, I needed the slot, and I thought I was going to put the slot in the end. See, the right edge hole right there is in the perfect place. So, I just need to move that back over. So that's full throttle right there. So, 
So the stones are in. I just need to move that hole back. Put it back the way it was. Alright, so I'm gonna step on the gas pedal. And I still got a little bit more throw. You see this thing really needs to come over. Obviously it needs a three turn spring. So this needs to come down a little bit. I don't have enough throw on the cable. And there's no slack at all. So we need to lower this down and we need to move that over. Right? That's gonna make the cable longer. That really needs to come over and down right where the PCB output is, which is awkward. Definitely needs to come in and down. Okay, I finally got it. So let me step on the gas pedal. That's full throttle. I like go a hair more. And then of course you need another spring. That's the problem with these things. I need another spring. But I'm gonna try that again. The cable is yeah, the all doesn't return. So I think you could actually go down just a hair more to get a little more throw because that's maxed out on the throttle pedal. I got no slack. But the only problem now is this cable is like right in the way of the PCB hose. So I need to re-angle that. I think I need to buy another one of these. Because all that stuff I chopped off, I could actually use. It would pull better, but it's not required. It would just look better. So I'll get another one with the next junk area run. But uh, for now, I think I need to move it down. I like this way over here. I just need to go down a little bit more, another millimeter or so, three millimeters. So I got it 25 millimeters from there to there. That seems to be the magic number. I step on the gas pedal. That seems to be, there's a tiny bit more, but I think that's good because I'll make the cable a little longer, tighter, once I get a full circle, get a new one of these. I just need to add a spring. I'm gonna do it again. So I got like no slack in the cable. And that's full throttle. So now I just gotta weld the first bracket to the second bracket. Pretty much liking that placement. Cable just barely touches the booster. There's room for the PCB hose now. I can clean up this bracket. Get a closer look. A custom bracket. I don't even remember what the factory one looked like. I think it was similar to this. Alright, so this is a recording of me uh, stripping the door down, taking out the uh, quarter glass, the regular glass, the window crank, I think the regulator, the door handle, the door lock. Everything you need to take off the door. The rubbers are already all missing when I bought the truck. <clears throat> so the trick is to follow this order. Already did the right side. This is the left side door. Basically got to remove the door lock mechanism first. The little up down rod. You don't have to remove the actual handle I don't think. <clears throat> but you definitely need to remove the, the locking rod. Then you uh, lower the glass down. There's a little block that you remove that lets you lower the glass down. You can lower the glass down the bottom of the door. Then you can remove the quarter glass. Then you can remove the uh, big glass. Then I'm removing all those little clips, handles. And you can, yeah, you can see I'm removing the hole. Then I do the outside door handle, the door lock mechanism. These are all rods. Just lots of little bolts and nuts. And then I took out the outside window. And now you can paint. Bunch of Phillips screws. And these are all actually metric, I think. At least all the uh, the regulator stuff, I think, was metric. I was surprised. And the door lock. Okay. Very tight.
That was four pushes, one long hard, three short ones. I love these door handles, they got a tall steel. There's a little piece of rubber here to keep it. It's a nice soft close, it's not metal to metal. It's just a big hook that grabs the latch inside. Little nuts with star washers. Very interesting. So I could actually shin this out. I was kind of bothered by it. It seemed like it sat a little too low. This little piece of rubber is a little flat. Just put a little bit fatter rubber there. That will shim it out just a hair, I think. There we go. I just stripped down the whole door, both windows. Obviously, some of the rubber seals were already missing, and the door panel was missing when I got the truck, but I got rid of all the hardware. It's not too bad. It's a little tricky getting that glass out, but um, we'll see how it goes putting it back together. But it all works perfectly. It's all in excellent condition. I just need to clean it up, and grease it up, and paint the door, and put it all back together. And uh, see how it goes. These little hooks are kind of tricky to get out. The trick is to put put something behind this top part and push it forward. Yeah, like that, see? Kind of push it over. I mean, oh, we're right in the magnet tray. <laughs> so, uh, kind of finicky to get out, but once you figure it out, oh, there we go, just drop one inside the door. This door's off. All ready to be painted. Here's my final design on my Weber. Well, the first generation. I need to get another one of these because I want to make it bigger. But basically, this is the correct location where it needs to be. That's where the Hitachi was, I guess. Now the cable goes around. You can see the Weber one was no holes were near where it needs to be. So I flattened the Weber one and bolted the... Uh, I got this from an R50 Pathfinder. Drilled some holes and tried different holes until I found the perfect location. So that's going back on with the other bracket. So here's my custom replacement throttle bracket. So I welded the bottom after I bent it. Bolts onto the intake manifold like the stock. Pretty sure it did. It's got a little bend. So we'll throw that on the carb. We should be able to start it soon. I just got done blading the brakes and I tested them. At least three out of four I've tested. This is the best way to bleed the brakes. This Motor Products Power Bleeder. Just put this fitting on your master cylinder. I got another one for the clutch. Do the clutch next. Just pump this up to uh, like 15 PSI, I think it is. And you just go around and open up the bleed screws. That's it. You can step on the pedal as well, but you don't need to. It's a one man, one man bleeder. Got a little uh, one-way valve. You fill this up with uh, brake fluid. And you just pump it up. Okay, here goes. I'm gonna try to do coat number two on the interior. It's black headliner will be black later. Different material. I didn't even need to paint this because I'm gonna dynamite that, but I did it anyways. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna paint the A and B pillar, and then then I'm gonna clear coat it and. Hopefully be done with painting the interior until I do, you know, the floor bill dynamited and stuff. Had to redo my jig with new tape. That blue tape just wasn't working. Here's the black I'm using. People call it paint shop. Jet black. I just put the last coat of black in here. Hopefully, I had the light on. Put a little bit around the front. All around this back wall. Getting exciting. Get all on the kick panels because you know I don't want to see any white seam. I'm just all blacked out. I think I got it all. The lighting looks weird with the light. Oh no, did I get a run right there? Oh no. Okay, I just got a, uh, I think the second clear coat on the inside. Looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it.
starting to look a lot less ugly. I'm not the greatest painter, but it needs a lot of paint. Oh boy. I had the light on. I just don't have the light on right now. Got the second clear coat. I don't know if I should put another one. I don't want it super glossy. I kind of want it like satin. I don't really want like a shiny roof, I don't think. I don't know. What do you think? Should I do like glossy? Eight pillars? I don't know. This is what I just put on, by the way. Paint shop, clear coat, gloss. And this can is actually six years old. A lot of fun to restart the hard body. Hopefully it's still good. Made in USA. Gotta be good, right? What is a date stamp on this thing? Oh yeah, batch 13-368. Gotta be at least six years old. Cause I, yeah, that's when I painted the truck six or seven years ago. So I just put some seam sealer on that seam there and didn't have it at the factory and it goes in the inside. So oh, I probably could have done this one too. Well, that's on the outside. There's already one on the inside. But uh, so I had some problems. Some of these bolts were broken and the bolts for the uh, headlights are smaller. I think they're like five millimeter or something. So I drilled them out to six. So these are all good now. Actually, I think originally I didn't think that was going to work, but it did work. And it was a broken fender bolt. I couldn't fix that. So um, I put in, I drilled a three tool and put in a six millimeter nut cert. And that bolt was broken on both sides. This one, it was so rusty that I was able to drill it and tap it for six millimeter. Also drilled both bottom fenders were rusted bolts. I drilled out the bolt and got a six millimeter back inside of it. There's a huge nut inside there. So I got this all clean, ready to paint, sanded. Still trying to figure out how to do this. I don't know if I should paint the black first and then tape it off and then do the white. Or do the white first and then do the black. I don't know. But I can't do anything because I just seam sealed this side over my battery tray. And I washed all in here, get rid of all the dirt, and I scrubbed it all with a red scotch bright, wire wheeled it. I've already soaked this thing in phosphoric acid like five, six times. I may do it again tonight, or maybe do it now. Now that I've cleaned it, maybe I can get some more rust off. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Now that I've got all the broken bolts fixed, everything is six millimeter now, except for the course board is eight millimeter. So all these broken bolts are taken care of. Uh, so everything on the fenders is six millimeter. That's cool. Um, I think now I'll just soak it all down and acid again and tomorrow or whenever I can do the next paint. I could probably paint this top bar white. But uh, it's looking good. I think I officially have everything taken off that I need to take off. So that's full droop and that's not. So love to see what this thing looks like around it height. So the next goal is to uh, paint the inner fender wells black. I got the paint. Paint the front core support white and black. Put the fenders back on. And then paint. So the whole inside is painted. Oh boy. It's getting there. So on the headlights, I found these on eBay. I think they're actually for a Toyota or something. And these look like the ones on eBay for some old Dotsons, but I don't know why they say they work because you clearly see all the holes are round and these are square. So the ones on eBay that don't work. So I was thinking about drilling out, making these holes square with a file. Wouldn't be too hard with a sheet metal. Then I looked at this side. I'd have to also do the core support. I don't know if I want to mess with my core support. I mean, it wouldn't hurt it. It's just a thing. Uh, just a bunch of file work. Tedious. Trying to drill a square hole is fun. So, uh, I think I'm going to mess around with 3D printer some more. I've got the file for 3D printer of the Dotson version. 
Because my 3D printer is fighting me. I think I'll spend another hour fighting with that and see if I can print the right ones. Bought 30 of these for like 8 bucks. Anyways. Just picked up some uh, sports car, Nissan sports car seats. This piece of plastic has popped off. Pop that back on. They're actually a uh, manual passenger. <clears throat> Pencils came with it. It's actually nicer seats than the Frontier because uh, you can pocket on the back. Driver's seat, is, driver's seat is electric. I think it's like my daughter's Sentra. It's actually got a height adjustment. And it's got the little lever to fold forward. It's out of a two-door sports car. Let's see if you can guess what vehicle these are from. Got the seat belts built in, got a pocket on the back. I have a pocket on the front. Oh, it does. <laughs> I don't even have that on the front, too. My well, Frontier seats are uh, manual. This reminds me of when I put uh, power seats in the hard bar from uh, Maxima, I think it was. <clears throat> These are not from Maxima. That's a four door sports car. These are from a two door sports car. And I only got about two inches of head clearance. I gotta raise these, lower the seats. So. The tracks are nice and flat. I gotta hook a power just to incline them. But I just noticed there's a big ridge here. Man, I may have to cut that ridge out just to get that thing to drop down. There's about an inch and a half at least, almost two inches. So I may have to cut that bump out. Side, the ridge goes all across. Actually, no, no, no. I may be able to just move the yeah the seats are way far. I need to hook up electricity. If I push the tracks forward, yeah, because these are like in the middle. Then I could probably put the that bump right in front of that bump. <clears throat> nice flat spot. I gotta take out that old C rail. Uh, so let's see, I need to move the seat. You can see it's just about to hit the center console. I need to cut that corner off. And these are going to fit pretty good because these floors are pretty flat. Oh, there's the bump. So I think I can put it in front of that bump if this size is the same. Probably just get rid of that bench seat thingy. Man, I think these are going to be easier to fit than I thought because this floor is like very simple. <clears throat> these seats, you can tell on this one, there's like dead flat on the bottom. <clears throat> you know, the hard body is like different size on each side and different dimensions and all these funky stuff. Depending on that, I have to leave these pins on. If I cut them off, it'll be easier, but I think it's a strength thing because the seat belts are part of this. Seat belts are part of the seat. So I think that's why the pins are. Plus it helps put them in, in the factory easier. I'm sure it'd be easier if I cut those, cut those off. So uh, let's see if we get these in. They're so tall right now that I take the headrest off just to get them in. But uh, it's actually not far from the correct position right there for me. It needs to go forward for my wife. So I guess they'll work because <clears throat> they just they'll just go down and they'll go. F yeah, they're gonna go down like an inch and a half. So and then they're adjustable height. So man, this thing's gonna be a cruiser. Lighting sucks, I know. <laughs> 